how to win that £10,000 startup race. I just really want to start off by saying that we only ever do what we want to do. Okay, if we want to spend our time watching television until 3 o'clock in the morning, that's what we'll do. If we, have, if we want to go to the gym or get fit, that's what we'll do. If we want to polish the turd, that's what we'll do. If we want to make lots of money, that's what we'll do. And I just really want to start off by saying that you'll only win the 10,000 part pound startup race if you want to win more than anyone else okay so imagine this continuum uh, from from one you know not really being bothered whether you, whether you win uh, to being really uh, the person who wants to win the most so you might be in the middle you might kind of be huh oh, you know I'll just see what it's like maybe you're a bit more um, serious about winning or maybe you are the most the person who wants to win the most okay it's up to you uh, pretty much, but um, there's this ancient quote here, uh, Napoleon Hill, there's one quality which you must absolutely possess to win, and that is definiteness of purpose, the knowledge of what one truly wants, and a burning desire to possess it. So I just really wanted to start off with a question, why would you want to win the £10,000 startup race? Perhaps it's because you want to get lots of money? And uh, 10,000 pounds will be very nice in your bank account to help you with marketing for your startup or some other um, uh, needs that you have. Perhaps it's because you want to win uh, just for the sake of winning and uh, beating the competition. It's like the Scotland rugby team uh, did on Saturday, winning the Calcutta Cup. Uh, perhaps because you want to get investment from investors. And here we have Levi Roots. He was the most successful investment on Dragon's Den ever. Perhaps uh, it's because you want to save time slogging up a hill. The startup race will help you to uh, avoid wasting time and energy and money. But ultimately, we need to realize that it's, uh, it's a competition and there'll be a winner and uh, there'll be some runner-ups. So I just really wanted to focus on the benefits uh, for everybody. Obviously, somebody will win the £10,000 cash prize, but also if you don't necessarily win, you will still benefit by getting to market quicker. The process that we're going to take you through will help you to get to market more quickly. The process will also help you to build a great team if that's something that's important to you and it's something that you need to do. And finally, it will prepare you for the one million pound startup race that we hope to run in the future. And this is our second race, I should say, that uh, just before COVID came along, uh, we started running uh, a 1,000 pound start race just to test our methodology and to see if anyone was interested in taking part. And we had eight entrepreneurs take part. Actually, no, it was 10. Uh, I think one dropped out and another person didn't really do much because you know they didn't really know what they were doing. But one of the members, um, well, actually, the, the previous competition we had someone who was in the lead for, the long, for a long time and he thought he was gonna win. But in the end, he was picked at the post by a young student entrepreneur uh, and young student entrepreneur won because he uh, generated the most revenue. But one of the other people who was taking part in the 1,000 pound startup race was a woman called Sheila. And uh, Sheila recently uh, went on Dragon's Den. Well, actually the episode hasn't even <laughs> aired yet. I think it's on Thursday. Uh, so Thursday this week, you'll be able to see Sheila pitching in front of the Dragon's Den and she was able to secure a £300,000 investment uh, for her business. And she um, took part in the £10,000 startup race and I'd like to think that uh, the experience that we gave her uh, focusing in on the most important things to generate money in her business and increase the value of the business helped her um, to get this £300 investment deal. And I should say that it's not just the entrepreneurs who are taking part in the startup race. There are actually, there is actually an opportunity for angel investors to observe um, what's going on in the race. So they'll be able to uh, keep an eye and, and see who, um, you know, who's doing well in the startup race and uh, have an opportunity to get to know them and perhaps meet them for a coffee and, and talk about supporting their business. But ultimately, um, the, the way that you win the £10,000 startup race by, is by generating the most sales. 
okay? Against all the other people who are taking part, this is how we are uh, determining uh, who's going to be the winner. Now, we do have a process for you to follow. Some of you may have seen this image already. So the, uh, the process starts when you complete our registration of interest form and sign up on LeanStack. We have provided you with access so that you can learn um, the startup secrets and how to validate your assumptions and then model your business so you can get an idea of um, uh, it's effectively your business plan on one page. And then we have a, a team building hackathon so you can take part in that. Then create what we call the minimum revenue products. And then the £10,000 startup race begins. Now, I'm going to tell you the dates of all these points in a short while. Uh, but their goal, of course, is to work out how to sell and generate more revenue, ultimately outperform the other racers, and then go on to win the competition. So, generating the most revenue is the key thing. Uh, the problem is, of course, is that all the other people who are taking part in the startup race wants to generate the most sales. <laughs> so, it is a competitive process. And uh, it's definitely going to be focusing your mind on the question, how can you generate the most sales? So what we think is the solution to this is to benefit from the LeanStack platform uh, to get fit. It's like going to the gym. You need to or, uh, you know, get fit, do the exercises, build the muscle memory, uh, effect, and then, of course, build your team. And in, in the hackathon, it's going to be really difficult for you to compete against, uh, if you're on your own, to compete against uh, a team of entrepreneurs. So this is one of the reasons why we are running the hackathon. Now, of course, you can sign up to the hackathon. You can sign up to this process. And during the hackathon, you might see somebody has a good startup idea and you want to join their team. Or you might be thinking, I need people to join my team. And so the work that you've done on LeanStack in developing your Lean Canvas, validating your assumptions, creating an offer based on you know, problem solution fit, then you can use what you've done on LeanStack to attract other people to join your team. So you can either join somebody else's team and give up on your idea, or you can persuade other people to join your team. In business, uh, it's really difficult to be successful on your own. And um, you know, our T-shirts, the League of Entrepreneur T-shirts is based on the uh, the holy trinity of the startup team. So Apple is an example we like to use. So Steve, Black, Steve Jobs, sorry, Steve Jobs was the hustler, and that's the T-shirt that Steve Jobs might have worn. Then there was um, uh, Steve Bozniak. You could say Steve Bozniak was the hacker, and then Jonathan Ives was, you might say, the designer. And so these three personalities make up the holy trinity of startup teams. It's not easy. To, be, to build a successful startup. CB Insights have researched 400 odd startups and they found out that uh, out of the 95% that fail, these are the reasons why. So, um, and of course, there, there's more than one reason why a startup fails. So that's why these figures don't end at up to 100. So the, the biggest reason is that um, they ran out of cash or they failed, failed to raise new capital. Uh, there was no market need. Effectively, they built something that nobody wanted. Uh, they got outcompeted by other people because they were focusing their time and energy on trivia rather than the, the most important thing that they need to do for their business. Or they had a flawed business model. Uh, maybe they didn't understand that they were a marketplace when they actually thought they were a direct business model. And the, the, the Lean Stack platform, the getting fit process will help you to avoid becoming um, a victim to one of these reasons. So it will help you, well, the competition will help you avoid wasting time and energy and money um, work, you know, focusing on um, the trivia or perhaps procrastination or perfectionitis. These are the reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs uh, you know, avoid putting their their uh, offer or their minimum revenue products in the public domain because they feel, oh, it's not ready. I've got to do this. I've got to do that, and then I'll start marketing it. And and before you know it, a year could have passed. And I, we've definitely had people who suffer from perfectionitis uh, and procrastination in our in our meetup group, and we're always trying to persuade them 
to get to market quickly. And now, of course, building something nobody wants, you know, who would ever do that? <laughs> it's, sadly, it's more common than you think. People fall in love with an idea, uh, they fall in love with a solution or some technology when they should be falling in love with the problem that their customer has. Okay, so this is the thing that you need to guard against. You need to make sure that there is a problem that people will pay you money for, and not just £10 a month, hopefully more money than that, £50 a month, £100 a month. And of course, if you're going to be competing in the startup rate, you're going to be trying to earn as much money as possible. Uh, so how do you avoid getting outcompeted? Well, as I said before, you need to be, you need to work harder and you need to work smarter than the other people uh, in, in who are trying to build a similar startup to you. And of course, you need to, this is very relevant for this process, for this £10,000 startup race. The idea, you know, the, there's a possibility that you might get outcompeted. And um, uh, of course, we don't want that to happen for you. So we're trying to make it clear and obvious of what you need to do from the very beginning. Okay, so we have the get fit process. We have the practicing process uh, where you perhaps build a minimum revenue product with your team and you start working uh, and um, getting to know each other. And then the 10,000 pounds start at race begins. Okay, so some useful in, uh, dates for you. Now, the Get Fit process is live and active, so we want you to go to LeanStack and to use the tools that we have uh, provided to you for free. Uh, we're very excited um, to be partnering with Ash Moria. We believe his platform is the number one platform in how to execute and apply the Lean Startup methodology in the whole world. So we are already giving you a massive bonus in being getting access to these resources for free. And um, then the hackathon, take part uh, starts on the 27th of May and this as I said before is an opportunity for you to build your team or join somebody else's team and create what we call a, a minimum revenue product uh, we also during this process want you to get a number of things in position if you've not already done it so you need to uh, incorporate the business if it's not been incorporated already you will need to open a bank account and you'll need to connect um, uh, the bank account with an app that we're going to be using that will enable us to track the amount of revenue that you generate through your business. So you need to have a Stripe button or a PayPal button or some other way of collecting money on your website so that people can pay you money. And this, of course, is a key component to the £10,000 startup race, which is going to start on the 14th of June. Now, the race itself is going to last for six months, and it'll, it will end on the 24th of June. Uh, and so somebody will have £10,000 in their bank account just in time for Christmas. And of course, it's up to you how you want to use that money, whether you want it to market the business to make even more sales, or whether you want to buy yourself a nice Christmas present or whatever. It's entirely up to you. It's cash, uh, not a loan or an investment. It's just £10,000. And we are actually paying this £10,000 ourselves out of our business. Nobody has given us this money. It's not from the government or an investor or anything else. It's because we want to test our process, take it to the next level before we do a million pounds startup race next year. And we will be partnering with an investment firm to do that. And the one million pound prize will not be cash. It will be an investment deal. And a lot of entrepreneurs want to get investment uh, and this kill two birds with one stone, you grow your business, you outcompete all the other people who are taking part, and you get a one million pound investment deal. Effectively, what we're doing is we're encouraging, sorry, we're rewarding the behavior that we want to encourage. We want to encourage entrepreneurs getting out there, selling their business, uh, selling their product, the service, the solution, whatever it is, to customers and generating revenue. Yeah. Effectively, it's what you do over a consistent period of time that will help uh, an investor determine whether you're a good investment opportunity or not. Too much emphasis is put on you know, a one-minute pitch or a three-minute pitch, and it's either a make-or-break opportunity, you know, like we see in Dragon's Den. Um, but with our process, it's a meritocracy. Okay? So the person who works the hardest, who invests the most amount of time, uh, will win the will win the prize, but also they'll be growing their business. So even if you don't win, your business will be 
in a position that will it wouldn't have perhaps have been in if you hadn't been working so hard on it. Um, so how to so here's just seven seven um, uh, points, seven pieces of advice for you to think about uh, before you take part. I think it's really important that you solve a problem that you know and care about. If you have some domain expertise in this field, then you will have a far better understanding of who your ideal customer is, how much they will pay, and then of course you'll be able to talk with authority uh, to your potential customers. So if you care about it, that is really important because giving up is one of the main reasons for startup failure. We don't want you to give up. We want you to care passionately about the thing that you're trying to solve, the thing you're trying to do. Uh, care about the problem, okay, solving the problem. And ideally, someone is going to pay you uh, 50 pounds or more a month to solve this problem. It's, it's, you either have to make lots, um, you know, sell a high price ticket item to a few people, or you need to sell a low price uh, product or service to lots of people. Now, lots of people means uh, more marketing effort, which means more money spent on marketing, uh, and it takes a lot, a lot longer. If you simply sell a product that's actually got a higher price point, then the you can you know you can generate revenue more quickly. You don't have necessarily have to uh, spend lots of money on marketing. Um, as I said before, building a co-founding team. It's really, it's really hard to do all the things that need to be done in a business. You've got the tech, you've got the sales, you've got the administration, the minutia, you've got the emotional roller coaster. One minute you're, you're doing great, the next minute it's all going, to, uh, it's all going uh, down the pan and you're feeling um, uh, demotivated, frustrated, and you feel like giving up. If you've got a team of people around you, then obviously they will encourage you and you can grow more quickly. Uh, than you would otherwise. Now, the fourth thing is to create an offer that your customer can't refuse. Now, Ash Moria on his Lean Stack platform would call this a mafia offer. If you really understand the problem your customer has, if you're really able to demonstrate how you're different from all your competitors, and you're really able to demonstrate the, the benefits or the you know what the future use case or what the future life of your customer will be like, why wouldn't they pay you the money to use your thing? Okay, so it's, it's telling a story and building a picture for the future for your customer uh, that they can't refuse. Okay, then the fifth thing is to work out the most effective channel to get to market. It might be Facebook, it might be Instagram, it might be email, it might be other people's email lists. If you don't know the channel and how to acquire, activate, and get your customers to pay you, then it's going to take you a long time to generate the revenue that you need to. Okay, so you might find that you are number one in our what we call our lead table uh, of, of um, participants who are taking part in the startup race. And each week the, the positions will be updated based on the revenue that you've generated. So you might be in number one position for four weeks and then somebody has a big sale or they're, they're their, um, their efforts all align and they generate lots of sales and more revenue and then they end up in number one position. Well, what are you going to do? You suddenly find yourself in number four, <laughs> you're going to be creative. Necessity is the mother of invention. When you find yourself being knocked down to number four or number 10 or whatever, that is an opportunity for you to get creative and think, okay, how can I get to being number one again? What can I do? Of course, it's <laughs> ideally you'll have lots of time to work this stuff out. If it's the day before the competition ends, <laughs> then obviously that's going to be a problem for you to find some way of innovating and generating the money um, as quickly as possible. Um, does that make sense? So if you identify the most effective channel uh, and uh, ensure that your customer acquisition cost is as low as possible, then you will make more money through your business. If you have a high customer acquisition cost, then it's gonna cost you more to market to get these sales into your business. If you're a student, you might not have much money for marketing. Uh, certainly, you don't wanna waste uh, any, any more money than necessary, uh, you know, lining um, Mark Zuckerberg's pockets. And so you, <laughs> you, 
the, the, if you can acquire customers as cheaply as, and effectively as possible, then you have got more money to acquire more people. So you, Lean Stack and its resources will help you to work out what is the most effective channel for you to use to acquire people um, so they can pay you money. The other thing, or the final thing, the seventh thing, is to focus on the prize. Okay, the, the, the idea of the startup race is it's an intensive process where you are focusing, uh, this is your number one focus. Obviously, some of you might have a day job or you might have a university, so you definitely need to make it a priority in your life, though. If you remember that continuum, the person who's going to win the £10,000 startup race is the person who wants to win the £10,000 startup race the most. Okay, is that you? Obviously, there are some benefits for taking part, but we want you to, well, we can't all be the winner. Well, you can't all win the £10,000, but everybody can benefit from the process. So there's one critical thing that you need to understand. Uh, this is a, a graph that illustrates um, uh, revenue earned over time. Uh, now, we do have a limit. It is, we want to make it fair to everybody that's taken part. And this is what we did in the one in the one thousand pound uh, startup rates previously. Uh, we said that um, we made the limit of one hundred pounds. Okay, so if you have generated less than one hundred pounds by the time the startup rates begins on the fourteenth of June, then you can take part. If you've earned more money than that, then unfortunately you won't be able to take part. Hopefully that's clear. Now, if you are a an entrepreneur that wants to is in our accelerator program. Uh, and you want to qualify for the Innovative Visa or, and uh, you move on to and definitely to remain uh, here in the UK, then this might be, not, it might not align with your um, ambition. So you need to think carefully, well, I can, I can benefit from the resources that, the startup race, that this startup race is providing me with, uh, but I really need to think, okay, I need to meet the criteria necessary to be upgraded to the Innovative Visa. So that's for something for you to work out. Um, now, it might seem a long time, 14th of June, but you've got to remember we're giving you uh, time on Lean Stack between now and May to work out your most important assumptions. If you invest £1,000 in a channel that's ineffective, then you're not, going to be, you're not going to be making progress. You're not going to be generating any revenue. So between now and um, the 27th of May, is an opportunity for you to build up those muscles, invest in your business, and make sure that your assumptions are all true and correct. Uh, and then, of course, in the team building hackathon, you can uh, either recruit people to join you or you can join another team. But, that, but the idea is that when the startup race starts on the 14th of June, everybody is fit and prepared as possible to take part. So there will see a massive explosion uh, and entrepreneurs selling things, making money, and the race will be really exciting. Okay, uh, now all of this comes together. Um, so if you find problem solution fit through using Lean Stack, making sure that you have identified a problem um, that people will pay lots of money for, just what we call problem solution fit. If you've been able to build a team of entrepreneurs complementary to you, you don't want to duplicate yourself. I made that mistake in the past getting people to join my team who are just like me. Uh, if, you're, if you're a techie, uh, an introvert techie, you perhaps need to find someone who can sell or someone who, who can articulate uh, a, a mafia offer or write persuasive um, copy uh, on your websites to persuade people to buy your product. Uh, or perhaps you need to find someone who can just manage the minutia so you can concentrate on the, sell, on the sales. It's up to you. Uh, who's going to be in your team. Now, it can be an internal team of co-founders, and you might say, join my team, and you'll get a percentage of the equity in, in the business. Or it could be an external team. The problem with that is that you need to pay an external team money uh, to do the marketing or to do the accounts or whatever it is that uh, needs to be done. So again, that's a decision for you to make. And then create a minimum revenue product. So this is the smallest thing that you can build and sell to your customers. Uh, and a lot of entrepreneurs overcomplicate, overbuild uh, this process and, and create a, a minimum viable product. Okay, we, we call it a minimum revenue product. 
And a lot of entrepreneurs, they could just sell an hour of their time, uh, offering some advice or consultancy uh, or support to a customer. Yeah, one hour of your time. You could even use Calendly connected to your bank account. People, you don't even need to build a website. Just direct people to your Calendly and they can pay you £100 an hour for whatever it is that you solve them with. Or if you're a tutor, you know, um, I don't know what the going rate for tutoring is. But uh, a minimum revenue product can be very simple. It can be, uh, what's the other ways of, of defining it? Um, it could be a discount, an early. So if you, and one of the members of our League of Entrepreneurs a couple of years ago, he, on, he built a web page. I can't remember if it was on lead pages or something else, WordPress, I can't remember. But he said, if you pay 50 pounds, then you get a, sorry, if you pay 80 pounds, you get a 50% discount on our product for life. And he made 600 pounds in a week because people were like, hey, I'm interested in a discount. Everybody loves to get a discount. Uh, and so that's what he did. You could do that. You could offer uh, a discount for life for your early adopters. Of course, these early adopters will hopefully give you testimonies, which you can then use to attract new customers into your business because some people need to see and hear some social proof before they will buy your product. Okay, so you could consider this 50% um, discount as a, uh, what do you call it, a loss leader. Yeah, so you, and a lot of businesses do that. They use, they create something that's called a loss leader because there are certain things they want to get from that product. Okay, so how well you do in each area of these, uh, this Venn diagram will increase the chance of you winning the £10,000 startup race. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, finally, this is this is how we how you will win the ten thousand pound startup race. Okay, it's getting clear. Do you want to win because you are a competitive person? Do you want to get lots and lots of money into your uh, business, into your bank account? Perhaps you want to raise investment, um, or perhaps you just want to avoid wasting months and years of your life slogging up a hill. Um, so ultimately, that's um, it's up to you to decide. What is your motivating factor? Focus, you know, get clear, be honest with yourself, and to think about that every day. Uh, okay, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, we have an opportunity for uh, questions and answers now. Uh, I've tried Great. my best to cover lots of things, but. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of quick things I just wanted to add for everybody. Uh, James, um, I put this in chat too, but. Uh, the, the hackathon weekend is the weekend, of, as James said, of the 27th of May. Um, you should plan to spend the entire weekend. You know, it's going to be a 40-hour weekend. So you, if you're going to participate in a hackathon that weekend, um, you need to clear your schedule for that and be available the entire weekend, just like any hackathon. Um, most of them run over weekends and are, you know, day and night uh, working on your um, business plan and model and canvas and MVP and so forth. And then also um, because of that, we've uh, decided on a 5,000 pound prize pool for the hackathon. Uh, that won't go to a single winner. That will be split up amongst the top performing teams, but that's something to keep in mind as well. So there is an additional prize for that. And, um, just to clarify, yeah, James, uh, as James said, the race will start on the 14th of June, and uh, you have to have the your UK company set up by that time, um, and you have to be a UK uh, resident, um, and you uh, you can't have more than 100 pounds in revenue, as James said, by that in sales by that point of the 14th of June. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to clarify a few things there. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Sure. Okay. Does anybody have any questions uh, on the process? You can put them in the chat, uh, or you can ask them, put your hand up, either physically or use a digital hand. Okay, Ash. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm really excited to know about this race because this looks um, good, and I'm fairly competitive myself. Uh, the only question I have is, 
So for example, let's say we are building the team, we are building the MRP, and obviously we have to get into uh, that middle circle with problem solution fit. Um, I'm already working on my MB MRP, well, MVP in other words. So that's okay, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. The, as long as you've not generated more than hundred pounds revenue, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ken. Yeah. Thanks, Ming. Uh, I have a question. You have probably mentioned it, but I I probably may miss it. I just wanted to know how can you make sure the number of the sales or the profit each team make is clean line is well. So we are we're using a an app or an API that um, connects with your bank account. It's called Friendly Score. Uh, and so once you've incorporated the business, once you've opened the bank account, uh, we need you to connect it to Friendly Score. Uh, this is what's different from our previous race. We managed all the information that people uh, were submitting uh, manually, and it was really hard work. <laughs> um, and so we're using technology uh, to uh, to do the process for us uh, and the tech or the automation that we're building uh, in this startup race is something uh, that we we hope will enable us to run the one million pound uh, next year because obviously that is going to be more difficult um, and um, to manage the process. Um, I was going to say one other thing. Um, so the we also at work, uh, so you need so this is why we're limited this this competition to the UK. Uh, unfortunately, Friendly Score doesn't isn't available to banks um, uh, in Europe or other countries. But in the future, hopefully, when Friendly Score or some other API is uh, and it exists, then we'll be able to do an international competition. Uh, but at the moment, it's just limited to entrepreneurs in the UK. Uh, the so you do need to have um, uh, probably use a uh, another resource like like um, QuickBooks that will also uh, automate connect with LivePlan will give you access to LivePlan, which is the world's number one uh, startup financial planning tool. Uh, so it just really helps with the automation process. Does that answer the question, Ken? Okay. Okay, Mary Lee had a question. Uh, hello, James. Uh, for example, could you explain us how is like the dynamic of the hackathon? Sure. Well, the hackathon is going to be over a, as Mike said, it's going to be over a weekend. So starting on a Friday, we're actually going to be, we looked at a number of different hackathon platforms because we want people to take part from all over the UK and ultimately all over the world. So we decided against a local hackathon in Edinburgh because obviously that would be difficult for people uh, to come up here. Um, and so we we decided to use LeanStack. The LeanStack Plus has uh, the features um, that we need to run a hackathon. So it'll be an opportunity for the, uh, for the people on LeanStack to get to know each other. So Ash might be able to communicate with Ali Reza on, on LeanStack and you'll be able to uh, get to know each other and chat using the water cooler or the forum that's on lean stack at some point there'll be an opportunity for, for everybody to pitch their their um, startup idea okay so that might be a slide deck um, you might use your lean canvas uh, and um, but ultimately the goal is to try to bring other people into your into your team so the so the hackathon will happen on lean stack will be a, a digital hackathon so you can take part if you're in Mexico <laughs> Uh, as long as your business is incorporated in Edinburgh, sorry, in Scot in the UK, that's not a problem. Okay. Did I miss anything, Mike? Thank you, James. Uh, yeah, I, sure. Yeah, thank you, Mary Lee. Good question. Yeah, I had a, some questions on uh, can a team participate in the hackathon but not the race? Uh, the answer is no. The hackathon precedes the race, so only teams that um, – you know, are going to enter the race can do the hackathon because uh, it's really to prep for the race and build teams and build MVPs together. So everybody needs to be nascent entrepreneurs. Um, 
I got another question. Is there a minimum or maximum number of members on a team? Uh, the answer is no, there's no minimum, no maximum number of people you can have on a team. Um, I got a question about residency in the UK. Yes, one at least one director has to be resident in the UK, one company director. Um, you could be, you know, on the startup visa and be, you know, that will qualify you to be a resident in the UK. Um, okay, and then um, uh, Isaac asked, is there a separate meeting discussion about the hackathon or should we ask questions about it here? Um, James, I think we have a whole session on the hackathon coming up, right? We do, yes. Another yep. another Zoom call to explain the hackathon in more detail and to talk about yep. the prize. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, what if I need a tech person to join my team and I can't find one? Uh, well, you can look at, um, you can join Co-Founders Lab. Uh, there's lots of meetup groups in the UK you can join. They're all meeting virtually now. Uh, you can use Craigslist. There's a variety of sources uh, and places to find uh, team members, both um, uh, you know virtually and in person now, especially if you're in London. Uh, lots of tech meetups there, so get yourself to some tech meetups. And also, meetup Go ahead, and James, also other hackathons. Hackathons are a good place to meet co tech co-founders. So there's lots and lots of online hackathons going on at the moment. Okay, great. Uh, I think Ash had another question. Is your hand still up, Ash? Yes, uh, I was just uh, thinking to ask about the bank account. So you mentioned that we need to have a bank account in UK. It Does it has to be the high street <laughs> bank or could we have what, something like uh, Tide or Sterling or... or, or, or as Mika? long as it's, yeah, as long as it's uh, in your company's name. Okay, so it should be... Is fine. that right, James? Yeah. Uh, so it needs to be a company bank account, and um, yep. now we recommend that you open a bank account with just one director initially. Uh, mm. The more directors you have in your business, the longer it takes to get the bank account, bank account set up. Mm. Uh, and so this is why we encourage uh, participants to open the bank account before the hackathon. Uh, and um, the other, I guess the other criteria for the bank account that it, it needs to work with friendly score. So it needs to that you know have some sort of yeah uh, open banking APIs. Open yeah, yeah, open banking API. That's right. Yeah, I think yeah. that is so, great. Okay, that's great. I, I think I think there are multiple startup banks online, which is like Tide and and Metal. They have it, so I'll I'll look for it and and yeah, I'll do that. And as long as it also has an API for QuickBooks or uh, Live Zero. Plan. Or Zero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, QuickBooks Zero Live Plan. Live Plan, Live Plan integrates with Zero, right? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And QuickBooks, yeah. Yep. Great okay. questions. Any more on the chat, Mike? Uh, okay. Uh, somebody asked, what happens if our revenue is slightly above 100 pounds, say 150 pounds? Do we still get to participate? The answer is no. Um, it has to be under 100 pounds by the 14th, by the start date. So yeah, we can't, uh, we got to start everybody off at the same level um, to make the race fair. Good question. Okay. Um, okay, so should we do, go ahead, James. Uh, just so that, Ke I don't know if Kevin put his questions in the chat. I know he had his microphone off, uh, on rather. Yeah, yeah, that. yes, I did, I did, James, thanks. So I was just asking whether the uh, hackathon was entirely virtual. That seemed to be uh, answered in the positive. Cool. Yes, yeah, entirely virtual. Yep. Right. Okay. Great. Um, so, Okay, Camilla, yes, when can we share ideas with other participants? Um, that would be in the hackathon, Camilla. You can, you can uh, chat with each other through the live stat, through the lean stat platform. Okay. As well. Uh, um, that's a question that can I'll answer with you uh, later. Um, so, uh, okay. He asked me a personal question or direct one. Okay, never mind. So, um, okay, I think that's all. Should we go into breakout rooms for another? How long do we have? Uh, 15 minutes or so. 
Okay, great. So, okay, great. okay, I'm going to assign the BIARs and the BIPs to meet with James, and then other people will meet with me. Uh, okay, here we go. So just accept the room. <laughs>